other board members or they asked Sally when we were doing stuff for the Guthrie Group, you know, it's not really that important. You know, Mr. Pena really doesn't need to be involved. And, <laughs> Cause I'm a hard, I mean, I'm a hard ass from the big, from the first time I meet him to when I'm seeing their eulogy at their funeral. I'm 100% always the same. And, but they don't want me to, to meet him. I ask hard fucking questions. Normally they can't answer. You want, see, you don't want to put the bankers in a uncomfortable position. That's how you were taught. And, you know, look at your program. I mean, Jason's a hard ass. Uh, but now he's begin he was a hard, hard ass when he was a kid. But now he realizes that hard ass works in business. He says, I'm the first person in all his life that he's met that told him it was all right to be a hard ass in business. Not in martial arts bullshit, you know that. And, uh, and he's, now he's, he's doing two roll-ups at the same time. And uh, yeah, normally you're, you're not focused enough, but he already had a reasonably successful IT business. And, uh, the, and he says, the IT guys are bigger cunts than anybody. But I hadn't really thought about it that way. But rolling up oil and gas, they're not cunts. I mean, these guys, this is the last bastion of gunslingers in the oil and gas. But in IT, I guess when I think about it, you know, computer science, wusses, I mean, what, what the fuck? You know? How, you know, how tough can they be? The, uh, did he sell his IT business? No, no, he's, he's building them both up. Uh, now they're both about uh, 25, 30, 25 million-ish each. And the, um, um, but he, uh, the first acquisition that he, he fended off Chinese money. Chinese money is coming into Ch uh, Australia and buying up radiology practices, left, right, and center. And the, um, and the Asians don't like aggression at meetings. I mean, you want to end uh, the, the meeting fast, all you got to do is raise your fucking voice. They just, it's not because they're not tough. That's, I don't mean it that way. But their whole culture is non-aggression. But, and you mix aggression with them losing face, you got them by the balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah, you got them by the balls. And the, uh, and you can do it, you know, he just raised, the thing that was muffled, you couldn't hear, so he just raised his voice at the meeting. And uh, he said it seemed like 10 minutes, it was only two minutes, but there was silence in the room. Silence in the room. And then normally the first person that sp speaks went, loses. And so the, the banks wanted to not lose the deal. It was a great credit, and so they, they caved. But in his particular case, he heard me, he says, you don't have to guarantee this shit. The numbers are going to stack up. You know, uh, if I die tonight, does the deal still get paid out, the credit? And the answer is going to be yes. Okay? And, uh, the, and he has a lot, he had money. So his guarantee actually meant something. Unlike some of you in the room that just, you know, you're just signing your name. And so, and I said, it's, it's, it's not in your best interest to um, guarantee a loan in an area you don't know anything about, which is radiology practices that he's rolling up. And uh, I wouldn't, and so that's all he heard. You know, and he went and uh, he uh, held his nerve and he, and you know, and we have, he's not the only guy. And then when he discovered non-recourse money, I mean, fuck, I mean, it's, it, it, it's pretty simple, yeah. Uh, why people say it's more difficult in Australia? Is there any reason? Well, because supposedly the IQs are lower in Australia. That's what, the, you know, Australia are prisoners that the English shipped down there. That was their penal colony, Australia. Okay. So that's going back to 250 years. But, you know, so that's where the story started. Now, they're not really slow or thick. Uh, but you go out in the outback, uh, they don't know what the Wall Street Journal is. Uh, probably they don't know what CNN is either, you know. And so it's, um, but that's why. And their, their, their uh, uh, financial practices are probably uh, behind, considered behind the times, you know, 20, 30 years. And so I don't know if that's, now maybe they're only behind the times five years, or maybe they're not behind the times at all. Uh, but they follow suit. They're English with kind of an American attitude. Uh, but, I mean, their, their whole government is based on English law. But they've got an American attitude. They've got a gunslinger kind of, kind of attitude. And um, I, I, did, I did great there. I mean, I, 
we did when we were making acquisitions, we did great. And he's doing terrific. And he's not the only one. We've got guys rolling up general uh, uh, physicians, uh, GPs, uh, dentists, of course, radiology. We've got guys, uh, healthcare, um, uh, both from uh, not, not the top quadrant, but about the middle quadrant all the way down through home health, hospice, etc. cetera. Um, the, um, so there's, there's, there's a lot of, and, and of course the story is, he's from Adelaide, and Adelaide, Murdoch came from Adelaide. So everybody says Murdoch, well, Murdoch left, you know, so, but uh, there's, there's a lot of opportunity. And he's doing terrific. He's doing, and he came back, he, he went to the regular seminar, he went to the hardcore, and then he came back just in uh, August. He was there with Dan Locke at the same seminar. And he in, in defaults a bitch, and he's he, successful. And the more successful you get, the stronger the, the, um, the, uh, the pressure to de go to be default, because they say, okay, now you got $100 million. How much is enough? When are you gonna stop, I mean, how, th th that's the more the default then. Even the banks say, oh, well, isn't this a bridge too far? We just did these two financings the last quarter. Isn't this a bridge too far? Are, are we cutting cat, you know, aren't you cutting it too thin? But when you bring them deal by deal that stack up, that dog doesn't hunt. That reasoning is, is not valid. If I die today, would this deal still pay out? And the answer is yes. And the answer is yes. But I mean, when, and remember, in the financial uh, presentations, you're, we haven't got to that part yet, but you're going to be going in with one, at least one of your dream team. One of your dream team. And it's going to be the financial orientated guy or gal, meaning the one that's done the transactions. Because you know, nothing, virtually nothing these guys are going to say across the table are going to be something. Not, now, remember, we've only got 25 or 30 sayings. And that's not 5,000, so, but the, the experienced guy that's got 35 years of experience, he's going to know how to answer these deals that aren't in your 25 or 30, because they do ask you stuff that's outside the 25 or 30. The 25 or 30 things that you, you, know, you, you should learn are the, the basic building blocks to get you in the door, to get you them to, you know, just about to say yes. Um, but then stretching the credit, in other words, we want to uh, borrow as much as the cash flow will pay out against. And they'll want you to uh, have, you know, two or three times uh, 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 debt service to cash flow. Uh, and uh, that means you could buy something that's 50 or 75 or 100% bigger with the same cash flow. The, uh, and remember, the, if you're IBM, you can borrow money at 1.1 cash flow to debt service. But you're not IBM, right? And for a regular uh, borrower, a regular credit, 1.25 to 1.5, they want cash flow covered by, uh, excuse me, debt service covered by cash flow. If they don't like the deal worth a shit, they want two times. Uh, and, but I mean, some of the stuff Josh is doing is, um, two and a half, three, three and a half times the cash flow to debt service. Because in that end of the bed pants continuum, cash flow is really strong. It's really strong. Uh, questions or takeaways about, uh, Jason. He was here last month. Uh, he just sent me this email. I just read part of it to you. Um, he's current day and, um, he, you know, well, to say he's a believer is an, an understatement. I mean, that's, that goes without saying. He's got about, uh, I think, 4 million EBITDA now and valued at, uh, depending on how you, you want to value it, at 10, 12, maybe as high as 14 times. Uh, I mean, he's got 50, 60 million from zero. Yeah, ma'am. Is it? Okay, or is it under everything? As long as it's legal, moral, and ethical, and ethics and morals swing in the wind. So, this is legal. Okay, go ahead. So, if you come in and you have your, your CFO with you, and then you bring people who are not even on the board, like if I said, that's all my, my buds, and they dress up, bring a briefcase, 
come in or don't say the damn word and sit there. We've had guys do that. Yeah, we've had guys. I, but but they, they, they may be limited when you're checking in. All the buildings have security now. So they're going to ask you who you're bringing. And you got nine people there. They're going to say, who are they? And I, I tell you, don't lie. You know, they're not there for support factor. This isn't, you know, the... Uh, um, uh, like uh, like uh, everybody comes to the hospital to visit a dying grandfather, uh, but uh, no. So if they if they have a, a a place now, you can bring a half a dozen board members. I don't recommend that. That's overkill. But uh, the uh, whenever you go coming to these meetings, you're coming with your strongest participant from the board plus yourself. And two things happen. Number one, it's a learning process for you because you're going to hear these people talk. Uh, and number two, it absolutely validates because this is somebody with 20, 30, 40, 50 years, not maybe not 50, 20, 30 years experience that is adding credibility to your uh, statement. Not with a uh, PowerPoint and all this shit, you know, you don't need any of that. You really don't. And in the meeting that he was, that he raised his voice and everybody got quiet and then they said yes. They had already studied the numbers for weeks. It wasn't that they didn't understand the numbers. They were just trying to lean on him to get lesser terms uh, or better terms for the bank, lesser terms for the, the credit or the borrower. <coughs> but it just, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not hard. One of the, uh, I told you the first day, one of the great uh, 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 myths, financial myths, is that it's hard to get the money. It's not true. It's not. If the deal stacks up, the only the reason you've had trouble getting the money, and the kids from the YouTube that have had trouble getting the money, is because their deals were not worth a shit. I haven't seen one deal in a long, long time where the cash flow covers debt service, because you've always you've been taught you got to put twenty, thirty percent equity in. Well, by definition, that means you're looking for a shitty deal that doesn't stack up. Stack up means debt service is covered by free cash flow. That's the only deals we look at. Nothing else. If cash flow, free cash flow doesn't cover the fucking debt service, we're not interested. And even though I tell you not to use brokers, you're going to use them anyway. If you tell the fucking brokers, don't send me any shit unless the cash flow covers the fucking debt service. With some spare, because I want to pull money out and put it in my fucking pocket. Just, you don't put that part. You just say spare. You don't say you want to put your money. Yeah, you leave that part out. You leave that part out. Any, any, uh, anything else? Yes, sir. Question about SBA. Uh, yep. What is the main reason that you said to go to SBA and skip all the, all the commercial banks? Uh, okay, well, no, they're still commercial banks, but they just have an SBA division. Because... The United States government, in their infinite fucking wisdom, formed an SBA after World War II, Small Business Administration, to promote people loans for vets that came out of the military uh, so they could, 100% um, guaranteed, 100%. They borrow $100,000, the government guarantees $100,000. Only recently, in the last 15, 20 years, they have guidelines that the commercial bank is covered 100% by the government. They can't lose a dime, okay? But the commercial banks have added uh, 5 or 10% equity. They want to see skin in the game from you. And, they, and when a, a borrower puts money in, in the game, he's more committed. He just is. But what they didn't envision, or envisage, like they say in this country, is that that equity that you're going to put in is seller's equity. It's equity, just not your equity. That's why from the very beginning, don't call it seller's finance, call it seller's equity. But it's 100% guaranteed, that's why. And the uh, I, 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 deals that are probably less than $3 million, uh, a commercial bank, it's too much paperwork for too little fees. So they, they shove it over into the SBA. Now, the, the British government has a uh, equivalent thereof, um, and various other countries have uh, equivalent uh, where the government, what you're asking for, I want govern, ga government guaranteed loans. They call it different things to different people. And in, in, in foreign governments, those government guaranteed loans are often non-recourse, meaning it's not that you're going to crater the deal on purpose, 
But if the deal doesn't work out, you don't owe the money back. SBA is always personally guaranteed. Yep, yep. SBA is always personally guaranteed. Correct. Correct. And uh, they have a five million limits. Uh, but I mean, it's still, it's easy peasy. Yeah. Personal guarantee and guaranteed by the government. Yes, correct. Because if it's not wasn't per personally guaranteed, then it would be non recourse, and the SBAs aren't non recourse. The government expects you to pay them back. But I mean, um, student loans is a, a classic example of money not getting paid back. But you can't write off student loans. I mean, the government finally stepped in and said, "Well, fuck, we're getting fucked here," and so they uh, because you know what, what, what's the Uncle Sam? That's what they call the U.S. government. What's the, the U.S. government going to chase some college student? No, uh, but but now you can't write them off because uh, they were writing off billions before, and that's why you find kids. 40 years old, they're still paying back in student loans. But there, there's, no, uh, uh, there's no real, uh, the time frame is really, uh, it doesn't make sense to me because, I mean, they have like 40-year payment plans and all this shit. I mean, you could be 50 years old and still be paying off college loans. And now that I know, well, when I was at the University of Pennsylvania, I mean, you, you run up a lot of goddamn debt. Um, for a $65,000 a year job, which is just, I mean, I don't understand that. And that's why the system's broken, and that's why. Okay. Um, anything about Jason? Any questions? He followed the steps. You know, like he said a couple times, I just did what Dan said. He followed the steps. It's pretty simple. No, no uh, genius. And he's doing two roll-ups at the same time. It'll be interesting to see which one he exits first. I would imagine he's going to exit uh, healthcare first. I'm just guessing because there's a, there's a more um, uh, there's a it's a bigger universe of acquisition candidates. But I mean, Australia's only so big. Now it's it's a, a 25 billion dollar. Uh, that's a lot of business, but I mean, it's it's already healthcare's already been rolled up by three or four other. Um, healthcare entities in Australia. But the, the world is only um, a little less than 20% uh, accumulated. All, if you take all the fragmented industries on the planet, a little less than 20% have been acquired. That means 80% are still available for acquiring. 80% are considered fragmented mom and pop, and they call them cottage industries. I don't know why they use the word cottage, but anyway, they use the words cottage. Um, just drive wherever you go home, back town. Just drive down the street, and you'll from Pilates studios to you name it. The here in Britain in the early '80s, mid '80s, it was hot to uh, to roll up uh, gym gymnasiums. You know uh, those things like 24-hour fitness and that kind of thing. Any questions uh, about uh, Jason? It's easy, and you don't have to jump over a speeding car like he did. Um, okay. Next. Okay, YouTube. Thank you. Bye-bye.